Well, greetings one and all. Long time no see. I hope everybody's keeping well. So today what we're going to be doing is having a look inside this pen pouch. Now, for most of you who are on my Instagram, you'll know exactly what pen this is. And this is a, I guess, a long awaited pen perspective of a pen which I designed in collaboration with Iboya and a lady by the name of Yukari Mochizuki, who is a fantastic Arushi and Makie artist out of Tokyo, Japan. So without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the table. We're going to do a proper unboxing of this pen. I'll provide you with a writing sample as I go and some sketching as I talk about this pen. So please do join me over the table. For quite some time now, I have been looking high and low for someone willing to take up the mantle for completing custom Arushi work. And when I say custom works, basically someone who would entertain working to my designs. Typically speaking, in the past, this is something many Arushi and Makie artists have not really entertained, unless you pay great expense. This journey was mainly spent on Instagram, where a lot of Arushi artists and artisans have been really upping their game of late. Certainly, COVID has been instrumental in getting Japan on the map. However, after a few months of searching, I came across a lady by the name of Yukari Mochizuki, and I'll provide a link to her link tree in the description below. Her work really stood out from a lot of other people, in particular him, her impressive portfolio of Raden and Makie. So I asked on the off chance whether she'd entertain the idea of doing some of my work, or my designs I should say. And after many conversations she agreed, but did fairly warn me that the techniques which I'd asked for uh, were basically not something which she was always accustomed to. And that in particular was the Kin Bukashi, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. Okay, so the pen which I'm now basically showing you is an Iboya Hakabone in medium size. Iboya do three different sizes, they do a small, a medium and a large and Yukari's prices are also reflective of the size of the pen. And I'm not going to go into the pricing of this pen because that is personal and also it wouldn't necessarily really give you a ballpark figure for getting work done because each different technique would incur a different cost. Anyway, the, specific the specifications for the pen are as follows. On both finials I've got Kin Bukashi which is essentially uh, a, a gold gradient and then we've got some togadashi burnishing all over the pen and you will see that from the little gold specks which I'm just showing you now and they're really quite highly reflective and that's thanks to the burnishing and then we've got Raden pieces and tiny little pieces that are interdispersed throughout the rest of the bowel and even going into the gradients which you may or may not be able to see now I am going to be speaking a little bit more about the design later on because I feel that this is going to be the, the main centre stage of today's video. However, what we will do now is we'll have a quick unboxing of the pen and then we'll move on with the rest of the content. So please join me with the unboxing. So for this section of the unboxing, I'm going to just be speaking over the top of me unboxing this pen. And I want to say that this was a really unique experience. I knew that the pen wasn't going to come with any form of a box due to it being an accustomed boyer and as such they usually just get sent off bubble wrapped to the Arushi Omaki artist so I needed a solution. Fortunately Yukari had a few ideas. Now I'm probably going to butcher this name but Imada Shunkei I think uh, I will put the name down in the description below. Uh, basically, they, they produce the most exquisite lacquered boxes. And you can see that on the edge of this box, we've got some yellow highlighting, which really gives these boxes a wonderful warmth. And certainly, if you have a look at the website, which I'm going to link you to down in the description below, you won't blame me for picking one up. It was absolutely fantastic. Okay, so... To wrap things together, I opted to get a Furushuki from Musubi uh, Furushuki, which is a fantastic company that produces a whole wide range of different Furushukis in both cotton and silk. Now I opted for cotton in this particular version, with red and white and little white circles, little red flowers in the background, which really added to the harmonious feel of the presentation. Now lastly, 
I uh, wanted to mention this fantastic pen sleeve. This pen sleeve was made by Yukari's mother uh, in the most beautiful vintage kimono fabrics and features the most charming Raden stopper. I'll try and make sure I can put some overlay on that so you can see it. Now, Yukari's mother is in charge of producing these and one basically special feature is that the inside of your pen pouch has a special Arushi polishing cloth. So each time you take your pen out, it's going to polish it. So as of the time of actually doing this video, Yukari may have some left, but you will need to go and check out her website if you're interested, or sorry, her Instagram if you're interested. I don't think they're actually featured on her website at the moment. But it's also worth noting that the pen sleeves do fit pens of all sizes. I think even the Namiki Rushi number 50 will fit in there quite comfortably as well. So if you're in the market for getting a nice little pen case, then this might be something to look at. And I have a funny feeling she's doing three and five pen cases as well in the future. Okay, so let's just finish this off by saying um, these little bits did cost extra to the pen, but I felt that to really bring the presentation together, it was really money well spent. And as I think you can hopefully agree, that's with the wooden presentation, the wooden presentation box and the pen sleeve and the furoshiki, it really does sum up to be one quite special present to oneself. Okay, now let's move on to the practicality of this pen. One of the fantastic aspects of ordering a pen via Iboya is the specification of single or multi-start threads. Now, for this design, I opted for a single start just to see how quickly you could actually uncap it. I was most pleasantly surprised. Despite it only being a single threaded design, it is extremely quick to access this pen. Ibuya also has a vast array of different designs, both with or without clips, and offers most designs in small, medium or large sizes. Probably one of the more diverse pen makers out there. Now, my pen was intended for maquillage work, so I opted for no clip. Yes, this does impede a little bit on practicality, but you do get to see the wonderful art uninterrupted. The section and the length of this pen is perfect. It's not overly long and is made from really high quality Nico Ebonite, which is essentially their parent company, giving this pen a really nice light touch in the hand. Perfect for longer writing sessions. Some people may dislike the lightness, however. So to be honest, this may not be necessarily the best suited material for some people. However, really when it comes to doing Rushi and Maquille, Abonite really is the king of materials. Well, for fountain pens at least. Speaking of ebonite, there are no metal parts to the inside of this pen. So, if you wish, you may eye drop this barrel, giving you a huge volume of ink. It's just a shame that they no longer produce a shot off fold version. Oh well. But uh, if you do wish to do this, don't forget to put some silicon grease on the threads and also some silicon grease on the, the nib, well, the nib collar at least. Okay, now on to the exciting part, and that is the design. Okay, so the design of the pen was, well, my design. <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure how to objectively comment on this section, but I will try and talk about my inspiration and thought process. Now, for the longest of time, I have always wanted a pen made with Raden. So I knew this was going to be the starting point for my design. I also wanted to keep this a relatively simple design without being overly complex. So I then decided that perhaps Bakashi would be an elegant way to highlight the actual Raden pieces. In hindsight, I may have wished it to extend the gradient on the barrel as I feel it's just a tad bit too short, but that is more my fault than what uh, Yukari has actually beautifully produced. Now, why a boyer? Simply put, price, construction quality, and general aesthetics. The fact that they have such a diverse range of shapes and sizes really sold it to me. 
Now, of course, there are other manufacturers out there which do produce pens in different sizes, such as Pelican, but I do like supporting independent makers as and when I can, and the Boya are no exception. In terms of inspiration, I love the night sky, and whilst this theme is nothing new in pens, I really wanted something that would reflect the idea of the sun setting and rising through the night. Now this is why I use the Kinbakashi technique on both finials and in future designs I do plan on elaborating this design with some other elements, possibly grasses or falling leaves. As for the Raden, I really wanted something that would catch the eye and just sort of twinkle but I really didn't want it to be overdone, hence why I really opted to use smaller pieces of Raden. Why did I opt for this? Well, at times I feel that maybe the Raden technique can be overdone and it becomes too much of a glitter fest, which was not really my intended purpose. And as they say in the design world, less is more. Now going forwards, I will be doing more pens with Yukari and as I speak, I am in the process of trying to get some blueprint schematics from Iboya to help me better plan some pens going forwards and there may be possibilities that I might open up a design consultancy in the future so that is something to look out for anyway let's move on to the next section now as standard all Eboya pens are fitted with a 14 karat gold box nib However, you do have the option of being able to buy the pen without the nib. Now, why you would do that, you might ask. Well, simply put, you might prefer to have a steel nib put on there or a titanium nib, should you choose to do so. In terms of the writing experience, the pen is well tuned and the flow is really decent. However, I did feel that it was a bit generic to write with. Therefore, my recommendation would be to have someone like CY from Tokyo Station Pens do a custom grind or give it a slight flex mod. I do have another Iboya, Hakabone, uh, from Pokemondu, which I had CY do a fantastic soft modification to it. And my goodness, it is a night and day better experience writing with that pen. Now, as I say, this is not a boy's fault and it's certainly not um, Yukari's fault. This is just something which you might want to consider when buying an Iboya with a 14 karat gold bock nib. It doesn't really inspire. Okay, now I realize that sounds pretty hypercritical. Uh, yeah, the, the pen is beautiful. The writing experience is good, but I just feel that maybe this is something which Iboya could potentially improve upon is collaborating with a nib tuner to offer custom nib grinds, you know, an architect's grind or a curse of a talent grind, something like that. Doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but I feel that this would give the pen a little bit more distinction. So I feel that the real disappointment in the writing experience with this pen is the fact that there really isn't any bounce to the pen. You know, considering that this is a 14 karat gold bock nib, I was having some high expectations that there would be a little bounce in it, but there really isn't very much. And I'd argue the steel nibs from Bock perform just as good. In fact, maybe even slightly better, uh, you know, out of the box. Now, of course, you can get someone like CY, like I mentioned beforehand, to perform a soft modification to it. And my goodness, does it make it a better experience. But of course, you know, this is not something which is standard. And I just wish maybe, you know, Bok could actually do something in regards to giving the nibs a little bit more softness coming out of the shop. Anyway, uh, let's now go on to giving you my final thoughts on this pen. Well, what can I say? Despite my rather negative feedback on the writing experience, even though it's decent, this pen really is a fantastic joy to use. From the design to final product, it took around about three months. That's including the time for Iboya to make the pen. So if you are also curious to see this making process, please do visit Yukari's blog and you can see the full process there. And also it does help that Yukari is extremely passionate about her craft. And with her English being so good, it did make for very easy communication. 
Ikari's finishing on this pen is absolutely fantastic. Each abalone shell shard has been hand placed for optimum finish and smoothness for a really beautiful sublime look and something which just really represents the night sky. This does please me a lot because I have seen some pens in the past which do look a little bit textured, especially when it comes to Raden and Rankaku. Her work on the Bakashi is also something else and as time gets on, the sun should get brighter and brighter. Now to sum this all up, this pen costs less than most mid-tier pens and it really provides a fantastic eye candy. Despite the rather generic writing experience of the Bot Gold Nib, as I say, it does perform well and it does perform in all tasks exceptionally well, except for there's no real character to it. Anyway, my final thoughts are, book Yukari now. I can see her waiting lists really going sky high and I wouldn't want you guys to miss out. Anyway, that leaves it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, do consider giving it a thumbs up and a comment. Thank you for listening and for watching. Till next time, stay safe and goodbye for now.